So welcome to the high school placement process uh, tutorial or, or uh, presentation. This is the condensed version of the presentation that was given on Thursday, October 6th. We had some technical difficulties with recording the audio, so unfortunately the follow-up questions that were asked during that session will not, will not be part of this presentation, but hopefully you still find it helpful. So the first place to start is thinking about where you are in particular. If you are in sixth grade or your child is in sixth grade, you're going to start to learn about your options. Think through um, all of the different schools that are out there, the packet that is um, linked to the email that this presentation came with includes many of those options in our community. Then also start to think more about your child. As your child is going through middle school, they'll start to develop different passions, things that excite them, areas that they want to continue or to pursue. And it's important to just think through those, um, especially in talking with your child, about what, where they could see themselves um, finding their, the most joy uh, when they head off to high school. And then finally, listen to other people. We have a wealth of experience in our community um, from the local high schools. And talking with those families or hearing about those schools from others is definitely an important part of that process. When your child moves into seventh grade, I would suggest that now is an opportunity to um, visit some schools. Go and uh, spend some time in them. Maybe it's something as simple as going to a band, or band or orchestra concert, or maybe one of the plays or the musicals, or even just spending some time there um, for a sporting event. You'll get a sense for the community, get a sense for the enthusiasm and excitement that goes on at the school, um, and then also think about talking to some alumni families. Ask them those questions that maybe you want to really know about how their child feels at the school. And as you start to collect all that information, you want to you want to then start to prioritize your schools. Given that the choices are so many now, um, you have uh, a lot of decisions that you could make. It helps to prioritize the schools that you're interested in to just make your process a little bit more efficient because it does go pretty quickly. And then if you have your schools prioritized and then you move into eighth grade, it's time to just follow the, the timeline that is outlined um, in the packet that's linked to this email. The timeline suggests starting in August and follows some of the same path from what has been suggested here on um, making this, this selection. So really be sure that you're thoughtful um, about following that timeline um, in eighth grade because again the time goes very quickly and really you're going to be focusing on um, the first two-thirds of the year because uh, most of those high school decisions need to be made by March of the year uh, of your eighth grade year. So the real question is like what do you need to know now um, because now is the time to start thinking through that process especially if you are in eighth grade. My suggestion is to focus on some uh, very uh, specific things in the beginning stages of the process. Obviously, first and foremost, we're talking about your child and understanding your child is, is very, very important. Again, asking them and having them be involved in the process makes this decision a much more collaborative um, process and something that uh, they, the, your student or your child will, will certainly buy into. And so again, understanding the things that make them, uh, that excite them, that they're passionate about, that they could see themselves getting involved in, and then being sure that you align those things with the school that you choose. That includes the curriculum that the, that the school offers. Some schools offer varying curriculums. They are not all what we might consider to be the traditional high school model. And we'll talk more specifically about that as we move forward. But it's important to definitely understand what curriculums are offered at the school um, and then try to align those with your, your student, your child. You also want to think through the school type, the size of the school, the offerings, the opportunities that are present there. Um, this could include band and orchestra, this could include sports, clubs, um, theater, um, all kinds of different things that you think your child might be, involved, might be um, excited about. Uh, but then also, I mean, first and foremost in this, I think, is probably size, thinking through the size that, that um, makes sense for the school for your child. And then obviously, as we mentioned before, really trying to network and make connections with people about uh, who have experience at these schools is definitely important. We will try to share as much information as we can about alumni families with you and make sure that you are aware um, 
of who to talk to if you do have those questions. I also certainly say that um, I am available uh, to have conversations about schools um, and just share my perspective on those schools. So if you're interested, please send me an email to set up a time to talk. And then finally, one of the, the best um, resource bases that we have are our alumni. And if you have access to them, and we can hopefully try to provide you with some of that access, you will be able to hear more of a, a hands-on, you know, on-the-ground perspective from those schools. Um, one of the services, one of the, one of the opportunities that we offer for our students is that um, towards the beginning of the calendar year in January of 2017 this year, we'll be bringing in local high schools to present information to our students. In most cases, those presentations also involve student panels who come and talk about their experience at the school. So your child will hopefully hear um, some more uh, about those high schools from the perspective of the student as the year goes on. But um, January is a bit late uh, to really be starting the process. So again, you want to be thinking through kind of a, a list or a prioritization of schools prior to those events. So let's talk about public schools. The public school landscape has changed drastically over the, fa the past five to ten years as the school of choice uh, model has evolved. Before, the, before schools of choice, really you only had the option of either choosing your uh, school district, um, your home school, or a private school. Now, because of the changing financial landscape of public education, school of choice or schools of choice is now an option. So regardless of uh, the school that is your home school, you would have the opportunity, uh, if that school, if the another school provides it, to um, transfer into that school. So there are two different options or two different ways of looking at this um, as you move forward. Most of the, mo all of the Ann Arbor schools, Skyline, Pioneer, and Huron, and Community, are schools of choice, meaning that you can apply to enroll at the school. Now, community is a little bit different, so I'll talk about that afterwards. Other schools of choice include Celine. Um, Dexter is a limited school of choice. And then we have um, other, other charter schools like the Washtenaw International High School, YHI, the Washtenaw Technical Middle College, the Early College Alliance. Those are schools that are also charter schools and certainly take enrollment um, and don't have necessarily specific districts um, that, that would, they, don't, they aren't home schools for particular uh, neighborhoods. So when you're thinking of schools of choice, you need to start, um, schools will start to uh, prioritize their enrollment um, pro process. So the first is in-district transfers. So this means that if you are district for Ann Arbor Public Schools, you have the um, opportunity to enroll or request an, an in-district transfer to in apply and then enroll in a different school. For example, if you are um, district for uh, Ann Arbor Pioneer, you could apply for an in-district transfer to Skyline. Um, and so schools have said, the, the enrollment um, in Ann Arbor Public Schools, for example, has said that they prioritize in-district transfers first, and then they move to the out-of-district school of choice um, transfers. So for any spots that remain available in their classes, um, the class groupings, um, they offer for out-of-district transfers. So you need to, uh, for example, if you are a district for Celine, you could apply for an out-of-district school of choice um, enrollment in Skyline or Pioneer or Huron, for example. Um, as I talked to the enrollment off the enrollment directors at Interbrook Public Schools, they said that this for this year, um, the 2016-17 school year, all students that applied, whether they were in district transfers or out of district school of choice, were enrolled in their preferred school. So um, this is a good indication that if you did decide to go this route, there's a very good chance that you would get into the school that you um, were interested in getting to. Now, the only um, issue with the school of choice model is that if you choose to go to a school out of your home district, you would be responsible for transportation. So the, the public schools will provide transportation for all students that are um, 
all students to get to their home school, but if you choose to go to a different school in the district, you would be responsible for transportation. Um, so, the, the, well, before I move forward, let me talk real quickly about community. Community is a uh, much more selective and competitive, semi-competitive process. There are only, um, I believe, 120 spaces open for freshman enrollment. And um, every, all, they, they go by a lottery system. Um, all students that apply within the open enrollment window have the opportunity to be a part of the lottery. In order to enroll, student and parent or a parent or guardian must attend a open, an open house at the school. Once you attend an open house, then you have the opportunity to apply to be put in the lottery. And then based on the lottery, you will learn about whether or not you um, have the opportunity to be enrolled at the school. So that's, what, that's the big difference for community. Now, the question about um, school type and curriculum always comes up as well. And so I'd like to talk a little bit about the different options in, um, in those the particular schools related to advanced placement um, courses, uh, the international baccalaureate programs, and then opportunities um, to be part of magnet programs. So let's talk about the difference between advanced placement and the international baccalaureate. In um, the research that I've done and from talking to people that have experienced both, it seems like um, there is not a significant difference between the actual courses themselves. The biggest difference that you'll find is more in the philosophical approach to um, designing the lessons or designing the classes and then the assessments for those classes. The advanced placement assessments focus primarily on content and your ability to take tests, meaning that the majority of tests are multiple choice and that it's focused primarily on the content that was delivered in that class or for that test. Now the interesting thing about AP or advanced placement tests is that you can take the test without actually enrolling in the course. So if your student is um, independently driven, something that maybe and it's, a, a, it's a, a course that they might not be able to fit into their schedule but they're very interested in it, you are, they are more than welcome to pay for and then take the AP test for that course. And again, they do not need to be enrolled in the course in order to take that test. Students that score high on those AP tests have the opportunity to earn college credit. Again, that's dependent upon the, the college um, acceptance of that test. Um, but that's, an op that's, some, that's a big uh, you know, advantage to taking AP tests um, in high school. Now, it's also important to note that there is no basis for college admissions on numbers of AP tests. So it doesn't matter. Um, they say primarily students that, that the, the good, um, the sweet spot for taking AP classes is around three. And it's not like if you take four, five, or six, all of a sudden you're a more um, highly qualified candidate for college admissions. Um, because really, colleges are looking at a whole profile of the student, and if a student is really taking only AP tests, they don't have time to be more, a more well-rounded candidate when they go to college or when they go to apply for college. It's also important to note that there is no specific diploma program for advanced placement classes. Now, the International Baccalaureate, um, when we look at the assessments, they are much more focused on critical thinking and writing. The International Baccalaureate is the only program that has students write a college level research paper as part of the um, diploma program. And that is, um, uh, that is an important distinction. Now in order to take an IB test, you must be enrolled in the course throughout that um, term. And when um, after you you know complete that term and, and do that uh, have that class you then take the IB test and depending upon your score can receive college credit for the completion of that course 
Um, in addition, as part of the IB diploma program, upon graduation, you receive an international baccalaureate diploma, which in some cases is looked on more favorably by international schools at um, the secondary level. Now, that doesn't mean that if you take advanced placement, you wouldn't be as qualified a candidate, but the International Baccalaureate Program is a much more well-known um, program internationally. It was developed out of Switzerland, and it is a much, uh, more, uh, much more prevalent um, in that area. Another important distinction when we think about critical thinking is that the IB program is based on learner, a learner, learner's profile, which is the basis for the planning and the um, instruction that takes place in the class, as well as the assessment. The learner's profile is based on 12 characteristics that include um, you know, creativity and organization and empathy. And so it, it really takes a much more holistic approach to the overall learner versus being primarily focused on content. So it's, it's important to think about. In terms of rigor, I think that um, the, it, the feedback that I've received from families is that in schools that offer AP classes versus schools that have the IB program, those um, students find that the IB program is more rigorous than the school that offers AP classes. Now that's not to say that an AP class is less rigorous than an IB class. It just the feel of the difference between a school that is purely IB, for example, Y High, and a school that is offering advanced placement classes, for example, Pioneer, there's a bit of a feeling like the rigor in the IB school is more than at the um, the, at the school that offers AP. Again, that's a perspective um, from some of our families who have reported back from their high school experience. That is not necessarily something that is um, fully research-based. Um, so let's just go back a, a second to talk about magnets. The only school right now that's a public school that, uh, or I should say, the only um, traditional public high school that offers a magnet program is Y High, or excuse me, is Skyline. Skyline High School offers magnet um, programs that are um, enrolled in through a lottery system for sophomores through seniors. So if your child is interested in pursuing a specific focus, for example, at, at Skyline, they offer a health magnet, a business magnet, and an engineering magnet. That means that if you are a part of and enrolled in that magnet course, you would then, your classes would be designed to support your learning in that, re, that genre um, and that focus. Um, so as, as, uh, at the end of freshman year, you would have the opportunity to apply to be enrolled in that magnet program. Um, and after the application uh, process, you would then be entered into a lottery to determine um, if you are uh, indeed going to be a part of that program. So that's an option at Skyline, okay? Um, the other thing to uh, just pay attention to is sports, band and orchestra, and theater as in terms of extracurriculars. Um, well, before I jump into that, let's jump back to, to the magnets. I did want to mention that there are two other schools in our community that have similar programs. That would be the Washtenaw Technical Middle College, which is run out of Washtenaw Community College. That um, high school program is, a, uh, is almost a kind of a, a prep or a very similar um, experience to college. So high school students would be taking a combination of high school classes and college classes in an area that they really want to focus on. And by the end of their four years of quote unquote high school, they, w they could potentially leave with several um, college credits that they could then apply to their college experience. Some students even get to the point where they are graduating in high school, they're graduating high school after four years with both a high school diploma and an associate's degree in a particular area of focus. 
So that's run through Washtenaw Community College, and it's called Washtenaw Technical Middle College. And the other option is the Early College Alliance, which is run out of Eastern Michigan, which has a similar focus. Now, those are both non-traditional high schools, meaning that you wouldn't have ex the exposure to the same um, uh, experience that you might find in a traditional high school. So they are much smaller cohorts um, in a much different um, environment than you would find in the traditional high school. Um, as I was mentioning before, thinking about sports and band and orchestra and theater, those uh, are also important things to investigate if you feel like your child is going to be um, interested in doing any of those. The um, musical programs throughout our county are uh, quite impressive, and they are also um, involve a, a competitive audition process for the most part um, for some of the larger public high schools, and so it's important to think through um, what those options are in terms of uh, having access to uh, the programs that you think your child might really benefit from. So let's jump into private school options. When we're thinking about private schools, um, we are thinking primarily uh, the ones in our community, which include Green Hills, which we have a number of students that, that um, go there. Uh, we also have the um, parochial schools, such as um, Father Gabriel Richard or Washtenaw Christian Academy. And then there's also um, schools that are more maybe specialized, such as Clonlara and AIM High School. Clan Lara is more of a, uh, a school that focuses on um, supporting students for which the traditional high school model may not work best for them. They develop independent learning tracks, and they also offer um, you know, uh, homeschool options and whatnot. And for AIM High School, they focus primarily on supporting students with learning diagnoses that have challenges um, that a traditional high school, even with support, may not be able to be most effective for them. Those schools are also listed in the packet of information on the high schools that are in our area, and you can certainly learn more by visiting their websites. For most of the private schools, though, there are a couple important things to think about, and these are more um, these are important things in terms of the way in which we can support you during this process. The first is letters of recommendation. Um, most private schools will ask for at least two or three letters of recommendation from adults that your child has um, had experience with. This will probably include a math recommendation, um, a principal or counselor recommendation, and occasionally a language arts or an English language arts recommendation. We ask that you provide those to our faculty as soon as possible. The more time that you can provide our faculty to complete those letters of recommendation, the better those will be. And so um, as soon as you make the decision of applying to a private school, um, kind of start to organize the, a packet of information that you might need to get to Emerson in order for us to best support you. We ask that you provide at least a minimum of two weeks prior notice bef uh, for letters of recommendation. Now that's a bare minimum. If you're able to provide more, that would certainly be appreciated. If the letter needs to be um, sent back uh, as a paper copy to the school, we ask that you include a um, addressed envelope with postage so that we can um, make that process as efficient as possible. The final piece is that if this, um, if the school is asking, or as, if the school uh, provides a link to a letter of recommendation uh, portal, um, it always helps to send a friendly follow-up to those individuals that you've requested letters from just as a reminder, to because to, sometimes those letters come through in more nondescript email uh, type in, a, in an email. And, um, you know, we are as conscientious as possible about making sure that we read every email, but occasionally those look a little bit more like, um, you know, uh, less pertinent or less, less official um, email. So a quick follow-up, a quick personal check-in is always um, appreciated and, and certainly helpful in, um, in making sure that we can uh, support you as best as possible. The other area that schools, uh, most private schools, will have uh, you do is a uh, test uh, for admissions. This could be the, the PSAT, the SSAT, um, placement tests for particular classes, um, 
those are important to get on your calendar soon and make sure that you're registered for. Emerson School is not, at this point, a testing location for some of those larger standardized tests like the PSAT um, or the SSAT. And so it's important to just know um, your options um, as soon as possible. Those are uh, quickly approaching, too. And it's, it's, it's again, important to, to figure out when and where you get those taken. And, and again, the, a, a recommendation for many of these tests, you can take them more than once. So um, if you get on the calendar early on a test, and you don't do as well as you had, as your, your child doesn't do as well as they had hoped, there could be the opportunity of taking it again um, before the deadline um, passes. Finally, most of the private schools will also uh, request a transcript be sent from Emerson to the school. If you can provide the transcript request form to Beth in the middle school office, she will handle all of those transcript, um, transcript requests. And again, the sooner you're able to provide those, the better. And if you don't deliver that in person, a quick follow-up check-in is always appreciated um, for that as well. So for private schools, letters of recommendation and testing options are definitely something to be um, getting on your calendar as soon as possible. And then finally, just talking about placement, it's important for you to know that we can support you in that process. The most uh, Many of the schools, as you are going in, um, will ask about placement tests. Some of them will, requ will require that you take a, a math placement test or even a world language placement test to determine the most appropriate placement for your child when they come in as freshmen. So the, major in, the majority of our students end up getting placed in higher level classes, especially for world language, because our um, world language programs are, are quite strong. In many cases, they're moving into second or third year world language, and our world language faculty will support you in that process by recommending um, a particular level of world language um, class. So it's important to make sure that you make contact with those teachers um, prior to having to do the registration process. This can happen at our spring conferences as well. And so when our conferences come up in March of 2017, It'll be important for you to, to um, have those questions prepared for your um, child's teacher in especially math and world language. Now, there are, could also be, depending upon the school, opportunities for your child to test into accelerated or higher level science or English classes. In many cases, those, will also, those could also require, at least for the English language arts classes, writing samples um, that, that your child has done during eighth grade. So it's important to be aware of that because you're, you would want your child to um, work closely with their English language arts teacher to be sure that the, the work is, um, you know, had opportunities for revisions, um, you receive feedback, you work through the writing process, and then you're submitting what you hope is your best work uh, to the school for review. And so again, making sure that you're working closely with our eighth grade faculty uh, is, a, is very important um, to making sure that your child gets placed in the most appropriate classes when they go off as freshmen um, and, and uh, begin their high school journey. And ultimately, what we hope to be able to support you in is figuring out the best fit for your child. Ultimately, that's what it's all about. Just like you went through the process of deciding that Emerson was a good fit for your child, we want to help you in making sure that your high school choice echoes um, the fit that we found here. So, let, so let's, we really want to make sure that we can work together um, and be as helpful as possible um, to that end. And so to do that, I would offer up my time and, and um, give you the opportunity to check in with me. Um, and we can sit down and have a conversation about the, the options, about your child, and about what um, seems to be good opportunities for you to pursue in high school. Um, so please send me an email, um, come and stop by, and we can certainly set up a time to chat. If you're interested in doing that, I would strongly encourage and ask that you bring your child along with you because they can be a very, very important part, and they are, a, they not can be, they are a very, very important part of this process. And so I hope that they would join us. I, we can ask them, we can talk together, ask questions, see what they're excited about and then think through what the different school options are 
and then hopefully um, help you in a, a direction that you feel comfortable with to um, pursue high school options. So please stop by, send me an email. I look forward to talking to you. If you have any questions, you're welcome to come by and just chat, send me an email, um, or whatever the case may be. We are here to help, and we are excited to support you in this process. Now, on the evening, we had um, several questions that came up, but again, unfortunately, the audio didn't work, so um, I apologize for that. But again, um, I, I, I hope that you know where to find me if you do have questions, and I do look forward to supporting you in this process.